This week's episode is brought to you by Prime My Body's Recept Oil, a nano-enhanced CBD and CBG oil. And when I say not all hemp oils are the same, I mean it. Recept is the Maserati of hemp oils with an absorption rate of 98%. So for you fighters who need to go from sympathetic fight or flight mode to parasympathetic restore and rejuvenate mode this is the oil for you unlike other brands each batch comes with a certification of analysis and is thc free so you won't have to worry about testing positive at a surprise urine testing so check out this plant-based oil that is revolutionizing the health industry or you can go to EvolveWMMA.com and order a bottle for yourself. Look under hemp oil. So welcome to the Evolve WMMA podcast, featuring the greatest upcoming female fighters on the planet. They are women who've gone against conventional thinking to pursue their dreams. These fighters inspire, empower, and unleash excellence within a new generation of female warriors as they rise and evolve into the best possible versions of themselves through the power of mixed martial arts. So my next guest is an Invicta FC straw weight. She has been on a seven fight win streak that includes a professional record of three and O, oh, winning all of her last three fights by unanimous decision. She will also be participating in the upcoming Invicta FC straw weight tournament, Rise of the Phoenix, where she'll be facing Kaylin Curran from Hawaii, who currently maintains a record of four and six. So, hey, 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 this is Evolve WMMA. I'm your host, Shelly Devine, and I'd like to welcome Icelandic mixed martial artist and Invicta FC fighter, Suna Tsunami, David's daughter. All right, so hey, welcome to the show, Suna. It's great to have you. Are you, are you in Las Vegas? Yeah, I'm here at my friend's house, Jojo, Joan Calderwood. I'm just staying right here in her garden at the moment. Oh, so you're with Joanne Calderwood? Yeah. Oh, so Muay Thai kickboxer chick. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's awesome. So how did you two meet? Uh, we met uh, in Iceland in the beginning a few years ago, but then I went to fight in Scotland in my amateur career and she was there and she was actually with my with my corner cornering me and we had a lot of fun and then she came back to Iceland and I visited her when she was in Montreal a while ago and then now I'm here and she's been to Iceland about four or five times. Wow so how's how's the weather? <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. It's been 30 degrees and crazy sunny and really nice. Beautiful. Crazy beautiful. So is it warmer than Iceland? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Wow. Definitely. Uh, at the moment in Iceland, it's been, when I left, it was snowing. So this is quite different to back at home. I bet. I nice bet. Nice to be here. I bet. I, I, I understand Iceland. I've never been, but it's cold, windy, and dark. <laughs> That's what... During the wintertime, yes. But during the summertime, you get the opposite. It's, it's sunny. The sun doesn't even set. We have the summer solstice uh, on my birthday, 21st of June. And that's where it's kind of sunny the whole night, too. And you don't know what time it is when you go to sleep. Your body is not getting that. It's Sunday when you go to sleep, and he doesn't want to go to sleep because, you know. Yeah. So how do you deal with that? Like, I mean, as a, as a, you know, fighting year round. I mean, how does that affect you um, biologically? I guess your, you know, your your um, circadian clock. You know, your biological circadian clock. Your sleep cycles. How does that? How does that? Does it affect you? Uh, the you mean the how it's like back at home with the darkness yeah. and the sunshine. Yeah. yeah, it does. I have to admit it does. And and uh, the summer times are definitely not so bad, but winter times, especially around the winter solstice, where the sun hardly comes up, 
it can be heavy, you know, on your mood and mm-hmm. you can feel everybody around you. They're kind of tired. It's dark and no, no vitamin D from the sun. Mm-hmm. And we go to work and we come from work and it's dark when we go in and it's dark when we go come out. And, mm-hmm. But, you know, we read a lot of books during the winter time, and we kind of, we're like bears. We, we just stay warm. and But it's it's a rough environment, but I think that that's a part of what toughens up, toughens us up to, you know, to, to be able to endure those times. Yeah, I seen on your on um your profile um that or an, I I read in another interview that you had mentioned that you're you know you've always been active and and you've played like football and ice hockey and and um and then once you tried Muay Thai kickboxing you were like this is it for me you know like what how did you know the difference between the, you know, the different sports? What was the, the real key factor that kind of, you know, flipped your switch? I think the key factor was how much the martial arts, arts uh, changed me as a person. It built me up from being uh, unsecure about myself. And, and also I was driving a taxi and I was working the nightclubs and the weekends. And I felt that, you know, sometimes I got into situations where I felt like I couldn't defend myself and that's actually the reason for why I got into it in the beginning hmm. to I started uh, training Muay Thai with a guy that was a doorman with me and in, in exchange for paying him money for the coaching uh, I knitted for him wool sweater, sweaters for him and his girlfriend and for his daughter wow. that's when I started and that was all just to learn how to defend myself if I got into any situation where I felt like I was threatened because that had happened, but I was lucky to, and I'm lucky to never have had to use it, but it has done so much for me to start that, start that path because once I started, once I hit that path, all came together for me. I I just fell in love. Wow. And it just evolved into what I'm doing today. Wow. I love that you knitted your way into into, into the martial arts. <laughs> That's awesome. I think there are other fighters. They they do they, they knit actually to calm their nerves prior to the fight. Like if they're yeah. getting into the cage or something. I think that's fascinating. Yeah. Well, you must be really good at knitting sweaters then. With your I wish I had more time for it. My mom is good. I, 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 I got a mom that she's a good teacher, but I wish I had more time to do it. Maybe later I will have more time to. Oh, sure. Wow. So um, are you like a Viking descendant? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah? I believe. I believe that. Truly, I do. Yeah. I mean, that must be, I mean, did you feel that kind of come out? Like, you know, like when you first hit a bag or you first kick somebody during a, you know, a training session or something like that? Did you be like, were you like, oh, the light bulb just went on? Because, I, you know, I'm, I'm totally a warrior. I mean, to get in the cage, you have to be, you have to have like some other kind of thing going on for sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I did. Uh, it was. It was a fire in me, and it just lit up. Um, yeah, because I'm, I'm happy that I that I found that fire. Yeah, for sure. Your coach um even had mentioned that you train like a professional you, from the first moment that he met you and saw you training. You train like a professional fighter. Um, how do you think that contributes to your success as as a fighter now? That that kind of mindset. Yeah, it definitely contributes. I see that uh, every time I go into a fight, I take that with me, that I, I put in the work. I, I show up for training sessions and I, I work hard. And I believe that, that that's going to take you the extra mile. Even the days when I am tired and I don't feel like going training, mm-hmm. those days come for everybody. And mm-hmm. even if you're like in shape and you're doing everything right, I mean, you're pushing yourself and you have those days. And those are the, are the days that I feel like matter the most to show up, do your best, and be the best version of yourself you can be on a day you feel 
completely off and you just want to stay home. And that's what you take with you when you go into the fight. And maybe you're not having that 100% day. You're not having the best day of your life, but you know how to how to perform on those days and how to to go and, and find that energy because mm. you know, that that's what matters, to push yourself and put in the work and take that with you when you go into a fight to be sure about that. You did everything you could do to get ready. Now, do you get that um, drive from, you know, your folks or is there a role model that you've had that kind of has given you that, um, you know, that, that focus that, say, a pro fighter would have, even though when you started out, naturally you're an amateur, you're just starting out, but to, be, to have that mindset to go for it, so to speak, and to know that you're going to be a competitor in a sport, um, where would you say that that came from? I think that I've always had that with me, you know, I've always been energized and driven and, and I've just been looking for what, what, uh, what to do, you know, and this is what I found and what I, what I believe that I was meant to do. So I could channel that in energy into that, but I've, I've always been a kind of a really active person all over the place and you know, with juggling a lot of balls, you know, to, to, in and out of every day. So, and, and I also, I look at my mom and dad and I, I see that, that when my dad was my age, even though he wasn't training very much or, you know, he was, he was a very athletic, you know, and strong build. So I have that from him. I know that I have good genes and, and and my mom, she's the strongest person I've ever known. She's the rock of the family and, and keeps the family, like, together. And uh, she's tough. And I got uh, the best from the both of them. Were they surprised that this has been your career path? In the beginning, yes. My dad actually passed away. And that was the year 2013. And the day that he actually, the day that he passed away, he gave me the best gift I, he could have given me to take with me, you know, forward. That he was so proud of me because I, I, I remember when I was just starting, they kind of were like, "What are you getting yourself into?" You know, you know, I was, I was, kick, I was doing Muay Thai and I was boxing and I was doing Jiu Jitsu tournaments and I had a. A uh, cup on the kitchen table at my mom's and dad's house, and I had just been driving the taxi for my dad the night before. I had a cup and a medal, and my dad was, uh, we were doing shifts, uh, so he was taking the car, and I was up in the morning, and he was, he hugged me, and he told me how proud he was. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, so I know that, you know, he, he accepted, he accepted what I do and I take that with me into into uh, into what I into the the future and my mom she watches all my fights now she didn't do that she kind of was scared of you know but she knows how much this has given me and how much it has uh, built me up as a individual I, I feel confident and I feel you know, my self-esteem is way better and I'm I'm a stronger person and I'm doing what makes me happy and I'm actually and I'm actually good at it. I'm I'm doing I'm just I'm I'm doing a good job and she sees that and she sees that it's giving me so much. So she's happy for me and she watches my fights now and she even has people over and cheers me on and mm -hmm. That's awesome. I mean, you have a big fight coming up uh, this May 3rd. You're part of a, an eight-woman tournament um, yeah. for Invicta. It's, um, you know, what is it? Uh, Phoenix Rising. And, and um, you're going to be facing, uh, what's her name? Kaylin Karan. And uh, how do you see that fight going? I see it. I, I have a good feeling about this day. I'm not looking at only that fight. I'm looking at the whole picture. I've been doing that since the 
that came up and about. And to me, it doesn't matter if it's a single fight or a tournament. I'm excited about the tournament. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at the whole picture. I don't care who stands in front of me for the first fight or the second fight or the third fight. I'm going to be the best version of myself. And I can see myself being victorious that night. That's awesome. I, I, yeah, I've, seen, I've seen that coming for a long time. And I wake up in the morning and the, I have that belt in my mind. And I, I, I'm very excited to have that opportunity in front of me. Yeah, because, I mean, you fought three times for Invicta. And, you're, I mean, and all three times you, you've, you've won. And uh, your last fight was back in, what, 2017. So it's almost two years since your last fight. Is there a reason why you haven't fought? In yeah, I got time. injured. I got injured in my in my second last fight, mm -hmm. and I went straight into camp for another fight. And I had my injury checked, but they didn't really figure out what was, what was going on. Mm -hmm. So I went on with that second fight, uh, the next fight, and I made uh, what they call a secondary injury. So it took me a while to recover from it. I see. And it's kept me out of the cage for a really long time. Yeah. I've cause... been making the most of the time being away. I've been on the mat the whole time. And I took on a coach at my gym, Mjolnir, mm -hmm. as a head coach of the kickboxing team and the teenagers and even self-defense for women, which I connect very much to because that's how I actually got into this. Right. And, uh, it has kept me going and it has kept me motivated. And I've been looking at people's technique and what they are doing what they can do to be become a better version of themselves mm -hmm. so uh, after I got back on the map I could I could feel that that had actually improved my skills too and given me you know kept me motivated during that time and and it's like doing book work for a few months and I've been like looking and doing uh, planning out the the months for the people and uh, weeks mm -hmm. and days and how to set how to how to help them improve and that has improved me too and my my me coming back onto the mat and being able to train I went to Thailand in December with my daughter oh wow your daughter went too how exciting for her does she does she do uh, the Muay Thai too yeah we were at the gym day in day out even awesome. just every day, Christmas too. <laughs> oh wow! And great place to be for that time of year. Nice and warm. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. So, how do you fund yourself? I mean, like, uh, I, I mean, are you do you are you still working outside of you know being a fighter to support? Yeah, I do. yeah, yeah. I do. I'm a I'm a coach at my gym, and I'm a personal trainer too. Okay, great. And. But, you know, it's not easy, you know, I don't even, I have, like, since I was coming out here, I had to save up a bit of money to be able to, you know, thrive here without mm -hmm. being able to work or anything. And I have good support from my gym and from uh, a lot of people around me, but there's not a lot of money. So I actually had saved up a few bills that I call my motivation mail. Yeah. <laughs> that I'm gonna pay when this tournament is over. <laughs> so I, I, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, because they're giving bonuses, right? They're gonna be giving bonuses if you finish quickly, right? Yeah. Like if they're getting like submissions or knockouts, they're giving bonuses during this. But tournament. that's not. That's 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 actually just gonna be for me. It's just a uh, uh, on the. That's just a bonus. Mm -hmm. the, the whole picture is that uh, is my motivation my goal is to win the tournament not not the first round or the fanciest finish or mm -hmm. or you know the fastest finish my goal is to get through the whole tournament and and bring home that belt cool. everything else is is a bonus I, I love the fact that Invicta is doing this. I mean, it's t totally old school. We haven't seen any tournament styles like this. It'll be, it'll be a, a nail biter, you know, <laughs> like back in the day. I don't know if you watched any of the original UFC stuff. You're probably too young to, but man, it was nail biting. You never knew who's going to end up coming out. To, you know, is he going to come back out or what? Because, you know, of whatever. So this is pretty exciting that they're doing that. I love that they're doing this. I agree with you. 
mm-hmm. kind of a, it's going to be a fun thing and uh, see who, who will be, you know, um, you know, claiming that belt. Yeah, I did a tournament before I was a European and I came home with a, with a win from that tournament, but I, we were competing every day. So if you, if you competed the first day and you won, you competed the next day and you won that day, you competed again and so on. So you went to the event, to the big hall, like early in the morning, eight or nine in the morning. Mm-hmm. And you spent the whole day there. I was with my team and maybe they had five fights over the day, but I only had one fight. Yeah. And you came back to the hotel around dinner time. So you spent maybe 10 hours, eight, nine, 10 hours there. Wow. And you did that again the next day and the next day. And at that time, I thought to myself, I wish that that would have been just like one day, mm-hmm. whole tournament, just a wrap after the day, because mm-hmm. that's long. To me, to do a tournament in in two three hours, that's exciting. I'm down for that. Yeah, that, yeah that's it's, that's. It's I'm very ready for exciting. That. I can't wait to see it. It's going to be really thrilling, and and to see what occurs and how things go down, and uh, yeah. It's I'm a- sure that the first first bouts they're going to be very intense. Yeah. Everybody's going to bring everything in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some might be blinded by the fact that they can get the fastest finish or the mm-hmm. bonus for the. To me, if that comes, it comes. Mm-hmm. So if somebody ma- makes a mistake coming in with that mindset, mm-hmm. you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna read that mistake and and have that as my benefit. But for me, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna give it all and everything. And first two bouts, I know that all fights are gonna be very intense and exciting for everybody and the last one too i'm excited about this that sounds awesome i i can't wait to see it so you you said you were in thailand now this is probably you you've gone to thailand several times to to train over the years haven't you two times two times and yeah. did i see one time you you um you had some um uh fights over there but you were were you fighting men no, no. Oh. I, I, I guess I misunderstood because I was like, wow, how did that happen? Because usually I thought maybe there was no women that you could, you could um, compete against or am I, I must, I must've got it wrong. Uh, so uh, that was six years ago. I had mm-hmm. my first fight, my first six fights over there. I had a, like it was a barbecue beat down two of them. It was, they were like smaller fights, but that was actually my first MMA fight was there. And then I did stadium fights uh, as a Muay Thai fighter. So yeah, so I brought home six six and zero oh and a belt from the stadium. Awesome. And I had a lot of experience. That was all in four months. So in four months, I I gained my first experience as a fighter in a in a case and then the stadiums as a Muay Thai fighter I fought, fought the home uh, so the, the locals mm-hmm. that was a dream come true to go to Thailand and yeah. because I love Muay Thai and I had dreamt about going there for so long yeah and to fight the locals at the stadium and bring home about that was a dream come true way more than I could have ever asked for because I just went there for training right and I ended up doing my taking my first steps as a fighter and and I actually there I I started watching Invicta I didn't even have an idea about Invicta before I went there mm-hmm. and I decided I was going to fight I was going to be a professional MMA fighter I was going to sign with Invicta someday and be the champion and I came home with a crazy idea to my manager to message message uh, Shannon with Invicta and you know Try to try, try to get me signed, and he was like, "No, you only have one am- amateur fight. You have to." Uh, yeah. And I had a, yeah, I had some more, and then I we won the European Championships, and I had a few wins as a as an amateur, and I had a little little bit of an experience and winning the that European Championships. She she signed me up, and nice and here. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Now, now I have now I have the belt in front of me, and I have to I have to claim it. I have to go get it. Yeah, for six years. Yeah, for sure. That sounds. I mean, that that is definitely the plan for sure. <laughs> 
Um, so um, you, I, I don't know why I thought you fought guys, but when I, when I heard that, I was like, how did that happen? Because they're usually a little sketchy about women even being in the, in the ring over there. So, you know, I mean, they're, they're better about it now than they have ever been, but there was a period of time where they weren't. And uh, so I was like, how did that play out? But I guess I was mistaken. I, I, I understood it wrong. Um, so let's see, where are we on this? I have like so many questions. So one of the questions I, I saw a videotape uh, and you know, everybody's giving you creds for training with you and everything, but one of them was Conor McGregor. And I'm like, and you're rolling and training with Conor McGregor. So you got to tell me all about that. Well, he's a friend of, of us at the, at home. And we, he, they, uh, he, him and his coach, John Kavanaugh and everybody from, John's gym. They come over and they train with us, and we go over there and we train with them. Dude, and Gunnar and Gunn Irish, the Jesus, <laughs> the cats and the Viking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the warriors for United, sure. preparing for battles. Yeah, I just thought that was amazing when I saw that. I was like, "How? What's the connection there?" And I'm like, "The Irish and then the Vikings." Okay, I got it. I'm like, "Okay, note to self." Yeah. Very, very cool. So, yeah, because I was like trying to figure out, I was like, how did, what's the connection here? Like Iceland and, and then I guess Ireland, you guys are kind of up there. What is it like probably a five hour flight back and forth or something? Not even that. It's two, close? Two, three hours. Oh, it's really close. Wow. Yeah. That's like me going down to Florida. It's farther for you to go to, go to Las Vegas. Wow. Yeah. I didn't realize it was that close. Yeah, yeah, because he could. I love it over there. Me and my daughter, we've been there two times together and training and spending time at the gym. Nice. So, how old's your daughter? She's fourteen, going to be fifteen. Oh wow! So, are are you a single mom? Yeah, you are. I have a boyfriend, but you know, I I so uh, we've been together. Me and my daughter, you know, spending a lot of time the two of us. Nice with the kids, but. Now, now we're, we have a, have a, my boyfriend is living with us, so I'm not, not doing this alone anymore. He's actually, they have good friendship. And, that's great. And, yeah. That's great. Wow. Yeah. So that's awesome that your daughter is kind of, you know, following in your footsteps. She must be very proud of you as her mom and see you as a role model, you know, like as, as a very empowered, strong woman. She must be like, wow, mom. <laughs> you know, her friends must be like, wow, too, right? Oh, well, she's my biggest supporter and my my everything. And and uh, for me to have that from her, I I couldn't do this without without her. I wouldn't do this without her support and her love. And and for her to be uh, experiencing that with me, I'm very happy about it. But I have no. There has never been a any pressure on her she started training when she was six years old at my gym uh, like she did too and uh, with a kid but then she uh, wanted to try different things she tried judo and she was uh, swimming in a, wow. in a swimming uh, practice swimming, swimming and handball and like football all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff and hip-hop dancing but then Two years ago, she, she she found it in herself that she wanted to come back. I was so happy that she tried different things and mm. and just figured out herself that she wanted to come back. And whatever she's doing, and I support her. But to have mm. her in this with me, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing because to be able to go and travel with her and train with her and, you know, have those times, it's it's. it's I'm very happy about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, whatever she decides to do, I support her like she supports me. Yeah, it's such a great out outlet. And it's a, it's a very healthy outlet, I think, which some people might not think so because you're, you know, you're, you're fighting or whatever. Not that you have to be like a, an MMA fighter. You can still practice in martial arts. Um, mm -hmm. But it's such a, it's very healthy mindset and physical 
you know, for your body and everything. And, and two, like, I mean, in all aspects of your life, I think, because you end up eating well, you, you stay away from kind of, you know, things that might harm your body or your mind. I, I, I don't know. I, I found that. And I think it's great yeah. kids that are involved. In, in and, and, and as long as they do the work, just like we know that we have to do the work mm -hmm. before we go into the cage, we don't enter in there without uh, preparing ourselves. You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's all it's, you know, you have to know, know where your feet are and you have to have your hands up and defend yourself in the one, two and three, and then mm -hmm. everything else comes in. So if, if I know that she does that and puts in all the work, it's never going to be easy if she decides to go in to a mm -hmm. fight. I watched her doing jiu-jitsu tournaments, and I'm I'm like, you know, it's, it's a lot of emotions, but she yeah. loves it. And as long as I, I would watch her do a handball tournament, uh, like uh, competitions and football, and mm -hmm. I always get the same emotions. And, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm excited for her and, and you know, but I know that she shows up for practices and gets ready and, you know, then, you know, I support her. Yeah, that's awesome. So what are, what are three to five maybe things that, that you do that are essential to your success uh, on in leading an empowered life and being, a, you know, a successful fighter? Meaning, uh, so... So three to five things that you find that, that you do on a regular basis that are essential for you to be successful in what you do. Show up for training, eat, eat healthy mm -hmm. and sleep. I meditate and I, I focus on uh, not only the physical training, but the mental training too. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I give myself time in between to to rest and recover, and I have good. I'm surrounded by good people that I mm -hmm. uh, help me with, uh, you know, recovering in my body and how to set up my sessions. And I I have a nutritionist that I work with, and I, I didn't have all that before, but you know, just you know, put in the work and. Take care of yourself and be healthy and go, you know, get your rest time in between and, you mm -hmm. know, focus on the, on the, on the mental side too. Don't, don't only push yourself physically, but push yourself mentally too. Yeah. You know, that visualize and, and don't always, you know, sometimes I, I train in my mind. I often, I often sit and I, I visualize and I, and I go through, over things in my mind. I, and I love that too. And, and I feel that improves me as well. I take that as I go in the next time and I go training and I'm, I'm fixing things in my mind and I, I improve when I do that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just pause for a second. That was a great yeah, answer. Yeah. All right. I'm going to pause. Hang on. So when you're meditating um, and you're visualizing do you find that that um, adds to your, like, you know, I mean, do you visualize your fights and, and, and you coming out like, you know, okay, I'm the victor. And I mean, there's so much with nowadays this law of attraction and visualization and feeling your way through things and, and the outcome. Do you feel like you're, you're in that process of creating your reality, I guess, through your visualizations? Yeah, you could say that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Through the whole process, I've been without even planning on it or, you know, uh, going by anything that anybody has, you know, written about or talked about. And, some, you know, it has, it's just been in me to, to, I mean, I've been surprising myself the whole way. And, uh, and uh, I've done that without even realizing it. And uh, it's not just that I realize, uh, uh, visualize the the end point. I visualize the whole process. Mm -hmm. So as I'm in between camps, I use that. I'm training, and I mm -hmm. I'm thinking about about it in between training sessions, and I and I I use all kinds of things I have 
my own way of doing it with myself. I sometimes have a guided meditation that actually helps people to, for preparation to some kind of competition. Mm -hmm. I meditate in the swimming pool. I go underwater. I'm swimming through those, all those emotions. I do it when I'm running. Mm -hmm. And I have so many different ways of, of meditating and going through things. So there's so much that I go through. So it's not just that end point. Mm -hmm. I go through, I go through my, and the newest thing for me is to go into a float tank. Ah, a lot of a lot of fighters I've heard have been doing that sort of thing. It gets yeah, you really you like totally relaxed, right? Yeah. And w adding all those things together, so I have that thing that where I where I have that guided meditation. I've done that for for years now, where I've use that and adding the flotation tank to it and being able to go into the flotation tank without mm -hmm. having anything on, but I have it in my mind that guided. So I guide myself in the first few minutes mm -hmm. to some, some scenario. So if I had a training session and I go into the tank and I, I see things that I did good in my session. Okay. I did a few things good and I try to run over those things, but then I'm thinking, so what what went wrong? What could I? Mm -hmm. So what what was it that that I needed to fix in my session? So I see those things and I and I think to myself, so what could you have done in that in that situation? Mm -hmm. And so I spend a few minutes visualizing, visualizing, and next time I go training, I can actually mm -hmm. fix those things. I do that automatically because. I kind of get that in my mind and I go into that situation. I I happen to, you know, be in, you know, some, yeah, some situation and I, I, I'm able to add to it and kind of fix it in, 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 in a lot of, uh, in a lot of uh, cases I can do that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I, I'm, I'm, you know, it, it, it actually just helps me. Uh, train without being physically training but mm -hmm. then I also do especially leading up to a big fight in camp mm -hmm. that's when I kind of go deeper and I go into that zone where I see myself uh, uh, in some kind of a competition that I've been in before mm -hmm. and sometimes I'm in a competition where I did a good job and everything went well and I have that feeling of uh, success and I'm taking that with me into the competition I'm going into now. Mm -hmm. And I, I take that feeling with me of success. And I see the, the whole event all the way through the, the whole process. Mm -hmm. So I see myself my, with my hand raised. So it's, Did you learn any of this? Like, I mean, I know uh, Conor McGregor's kind of big in, I, I mean, he like, you know, sets like, you know, his mantras, he's got like the whole mindset thing going. Did you pick up any of that from him, you know, training alongside him or for any of his coaches when they come to your gym and has any of that brushed up on you? I mean, I, I sometimes when I'm just walking to the swimming pool or something mm -hmm. and I put my headphones on and I have some kind of a motivation and I'm just sometimes I just flick through YouTube and I put on some motivation and and Connor comes up mm -hmm. and I hear him talking about you know if you can see it you can you can if you can see it if you can you know it, then you can achieve it I, I can't remember all those things but I love it when he does that yeah yeah, get you get you motivated, huh? It is so true. It is so true. You yeah. can, if you can see it, you can achieve it. Mm -hmm. You know, and you, you're, is, and you know, he is true about that. That's truth. You know, everybody should, mm -hmm. if they have something that they dream about, they should. If they dream about something, mm -hmm. you can do it. Yeah, you it is like it. that. Yeah, yeah. You should, it. you should set yourself. You know, don't don't get stuck into some some. Uh, don't be narrow minded about it that you you cannot because of something in the environment because you can mm -hmm. do anything. Anything mm -hmm. is possible if you put your mind to it. If you can see it, if you can dream it, you can do it. Mm -hmm. 
just like that. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you just you have to believe. Yeah. So along your journey, has there been a time where you experienced failure and, and what did you learn from it? Yeah, definitely. Failure, failure in life, failure with myself, failure in, in fighting. Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, I think that's why I'm here, you know. Uh, everything, when all comes to all, you know, you have to learn, you know, have to see it as a learning process and, and get back up you know mm-hmm. don't 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 lie lie down don't let it like bring you down and, and you you know every time you get down you have to get back up and you're stronger than ever before so every 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 time that has happened it hasn't just happened in the cage it's happened in life and you have to just take it with you you know get mm-hmm. back up and keep going and every time you do that you're stronger right more durable right um from, was, was from that, a, what's that from the uh from the only loss i had as a as a fighter as an amateur fighter i had a loss that was my biggest learning experience there was so much you could take from that experience mm, that was very early in your career was it your first fight or uh yeah i think so uh no it was not no it was my first fight i think after i came home from thailand Mm -hmm. and uh yeah and also when you get injured and you have setbacks you know Mm -hmm. uh, use the time and keep your head in the right place and stay motivated i know it's hard and Mm -hmm. you kind of go through all the the emotions and you lose your motivation Find it again. Mm-hmm. Once you find it, it's going to be more than ever, stronger than ever. And, you know, get back up. Keep going. Keep fighting. Mm-hmm. You know, in any situation, whatever puts you down. What's been the greatest challenge uh, when, say, dealing with fear? And how, have you, how do you overcome it when you deal with fear? Fear is a part of this. Fear is something that you need to get ready. You know, it's it's a natural feeling. And you wouldn't be, there's nothing normal about not feeling, you know, fear. But fear, you know, you can channel that into a good energy. And it's your body getting ready. uh, Yeah. Just take it with you. Use it as energy. It's energy. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's neat how you say that. It's energy. You know, it's like it's fuel to to get you to move forward, you know, to take action or something, right? Yeah, your your body gets all excited, you know. You before we were we had that darkness around us and we didn't have those lights to switch on and you know, we had campfires and you mm-hmm. know, when your kids run off into the darkness, you know, they should not do that because they should feel fear they and there's danger out there and you know you have to your body needs to have that emotion so it knows how to go and fight how to Mm -hmm. fight the danger how to Mm -hmm. how to get all all those emotions get excited and Mm -hmm. go into fight or flight and and fight Mm -hmm. can you share a time in your martial arts journey where you experienced uh, like an aha, like an epiphany moment. Uh, in my fighter fighter's journey, um, mm. an aha moment. I would say Can you give me an example like um like you know just the light bulb went on like you you know like you were training and and you learned something that was like Oh my gosh, how could I have not like gotten that or grasped that and because of an instance during your training or maybe during a fight where you just it like happened, wow. it happened so often that <laughs> moment so often. <laughs> that's, that's there's so much I've learned and so many moments I've had like this. Like it's still going on. I still get those moments. Like yeah. wow, that's amazing and I'm always learning something new. 
yeah. is endless. This game is endless. You, mm -hmm. you think you know something and then, then you learn something new. and That's the beauty of it, adding, right? Yeah. You're always adding to your game. You're always, you mm -hmm. can always be a better, better fighter and, mm. and add to your arsenal. And, and yeah. So I saw that you, you like to get out in, into nature and do some training outdoors. Um, what does that typically entail? It, it entails like tomorrow me and De jo Jojo are taking a day off. We're going hiking mm -hmm. and we're going to uh, some hot springs out here. But th that way we get to get our workout. Mm -hmm. We channel our heads into a different type of training. We stay outdoors, we get the sunshine, we get the time together. Mm -hmm. And... We we usually train here on Saturdays, but we decided to you know you know do that tomorrow, and that's a way of of how you can how you can do that you know outdoor training and and enjoy that at the same time as you're you know being active and mm -hmm. getting in the in a good workout. So we're gonna be hiking for about two hours, I think. Mm -hmm. And then we get That's to enjoy the hike. Hospital. Wow, yeah, that'll be good. Will there be hills and stuff? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. I'm going to go I'm going to go and take the computer into the room now because it's getting a uh, low battery. Okay, let me. Is that we'll, okay. Yep. Yay, we're going for a ride. All right. Oh, there you go. So, um let's see. What what kind of I mean? Do you watch any movies, or are there any like um, maybe music that you listen to 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 get you motivated prior to your fights? Uh, I mean, yeah, I, do you I watch Viking stuff, or <laughs> uh, I read. I read a lot, uh, especially leading up to my fight, and then I just like to put my yoga mat on the floor and listen to something calming and get my groove on and my meditation mm -hmm. go into my soul. I wake up in the morning, I might do a little bit of a meditation and then I put my yoga mat out on the floor and, and move up, move a little bit and I, I put some music on. I, I like Seguros, it's an Icelandic band. Mm -hmm. Leading up to a fight, I listen to them a lot. Like when I do the hot bath before my weigh-ins, and mm -hmm. I listen to Seguros, they're calming. And, and a lot of more mu good music. But I'm more in the calm zone. And, and uh, after I have my, you know, movement and yoga mm -hmm. uh, mode on, I, I, I like to just sit down and read and relax. And, Mm -hmm. stay in that calm mind calm before the storm yeah that sounds very balanced i mean you get your you get your, your sympathetic you know the fight or flight kind of thing going you get that you know that kind of thing going and then you you do the yeah. complete opposite which is more the restore and relax and rejuvenate yeah. by reading by doing yoga by getting out in nature so it sounds like you've got a good balance going on there Channel your energy, and yeah. and it's good to have, you know, like you talked about, it's good to have that, you know, have all those emotions. You know, you're excited, and you mm -hmm. know, anything can happen, and you have that, you know, you know that, you realize that. But as mm -hmm. you also know that you're putting all the work, you're ready to go, you know, you did everything to 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 prepare prepare yeah and then you can you can take that time leading up to the fight and you channel your energy and you know you find that balance and and you when it comes to the fight you're just ready to go you, mm -hmm. you have everything in balance is there ever been a time um where you felt inadequate or you were told no because you were a woman and how did you handle it no i don't think so no and if, if so i wouldn't i wouldn't i would probably just you know 
try to go for it anyway. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> So, uh, charger. Yay. Yay. All right. So, um, anything that you would tell, like, um, any other female fighters coming up? I know you said you're training some at your gym and helping women, like, in, you know, self-protection seminars and stuff like that. Is there any, any sort of thing that you know, words of wisdom or about being a woman in a male dominated sport. Um, but it's becoming more womanized <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> you know, um, anything that you would tell them like about getting into the sport or, you know? Yeah, definitely. If, if that's, something that they they want and dream about don't let anything or anybody stop you especially not your own mind or mm -hmm. or somebody around you you know go and try it out and if anything people are you know excited about us women fighting we're mm -hmm. exciting and you know we bring a lot to the to the sport you know mm -hmm. the fights are very uh, intense and you know, we have a lot, lot of courage and and good energy and you know, good vibes. So if that's something you're dreaming about, mm. you know, go for it. Yeah. So go the women at your gym, um, you know, what what type of you know um, maybe challenges are they having or fears that they might have? And you being who you are, the queen bee of your gym. What, you know, when they're looking up to you and they're having some self-doubt, how do you maybe coach them or rear them along to get them over those, those fears or those, you know, hurdles that they're mentally kind of dealing with when they're in the gym training? Uh, I mean, we all have to have a good connection in my gym and mm -hmm. help each other out. I mean, they help me and, and I help them. I mean, we train together, and I don't, I don't see myself only as a coach. I see myself as uh, there's my friends, and we're all like a big family down there. Nice. So we can always talk and you know share, share what we feel, what we feel, and help each other out by, by that. Mm -hmm. So I just hope that that the ladies down there, if they have something like that going on. You know, I have had, had, you know, those moments, but I hope all of them, you know, if they need me, that they can, you know, find it in themselves to come and talk to me and I can hopefully help them out. But, you know, I have uh, had like a special group for women where we, we have a close group, only ladies in the morning. Mm -hmm. And we we train with each other, and uh, and I help them just like to you know stay motivated and have their own space for training, and and then those self defense classes are only for for women too. Mm -hmm. But also I'm I'm with the big mixed classes where the girls are training, and you know we all play together and we all talk together and we all share those good times together and bad times together and and I yeah I, I think I'm I'm doing something good but I I hope that I can you know I hope that I can be there for the ones who need me and be in, an inspiration because like for for example myself when I started out I didn't have a you know, big self-esteem or anything. So just showing up and, you know, starting to do this and being around, surrounded by that atmosphere, it's not only me at my gym, but it's everybody, you know, it's themselves and everybody else that kind of pick each other up. I mean, they pick me up and 
I hope that I am doing the same. So as a whole, we kind of do that for each other. And I think that that's why my club has thrived so well because mm -hmm. there's such a good atmosphere and we, we mm -hmm. stick together. Even though it's grown bigger and bigger, the heart, the heart in there is still beating so big and loud. And, and, uh, I still feel the same way about my club that I did when I started there. Mm -hmm. it, it does so much for me and I hope that other people can feel the same way that's yeah. awesome that, I mean you must be a I mean th there must be a lot of people that look up to you at, at your gym I mean I'm thinking in Iceland how many I mean is there there are a lot of MMA in Iceland uh, there's 320 something people living in the whole of Iceland and in the city of Iceland there's 100 and something thousand people but mm -hmm. uh my gym is two thousand members in my oh. gym wow. so out of that those numbers so there's a lot of people in my gym and we have more gyms in iceland mm. miller is the biggest one it's a, it's a huge gym with wow. a lot of members it's the biggest mma gym and then we have more like martial arts gym uh -huh. around the area wow so, uh, those small numbers there's a big number of training martial arts wow i would i just i never I, you know like when i saw that you were from iceland i was like wow they have it up there <laughs> i just didn't know yeah. <laughs> i wasn't thinking oh my god no yeah. you know it's, it's, it's the housing it's built in the rocks yeah. and uh it's like uh, just in the in the in the heart of Reykjavik, and there's a big like a hill and with the rocky mountain, and the gym is built into the rocks in the mountain. So actually, wow. a big part of the inside of the gym uh, and the walls and there are rocks. You gotta send me some pictures of this place. This sounds yeah. like crazy, like really it's cool, like like a cave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when it's raining, the rocks are crying. The rain goes and goes through the rocks. And oh well, if I ever go to Iceland, which I'm going to have to make a point of going when you're up there and come and visit and, and check this place out because that sounds amazing. The air in this room, where the rock, the rocky wall is, mm. the air in there is so fresh. So when you're training, you can just feel like. You're almost like you're outdoors, but you have the roof over you. Wow. There's a big outdoor area around the gym. Uh, it's like uh, stony walls and, you know, you can. Wow. It's really nice. It's not, uh, yeah, that sounds really cool. It yeah. sounds really different. It sounds very, yeah. very different. It sounds very cool. So, um, you know, you got you got your your big May third tournament coming up. Is there any shout outs or any um, you know anything any parting words? It's kind of like the floor. You could you know shout outs to your coaches, to any sponsors or anything like that. The floor is yours. Yeah, it would take me a while to mention everybody because I have a lot of good people around me. But you know, my coaches. My boyfriend is actually my one of my coaches who's coming out to help me, and and Luca, my coach, my managers, Halle and Snorri, and uh, all my sponsors, Nike for gearing me up, and you know X Endurance for helping me with the, uh, you know, giving me supplements like vitamins, and my nutritionist Lindsay Doyle, uh, all the Irish that Iris and. Uh, a friend from Germany and uh, Denmark that came over to Iceland now in February and Syndicate MMA, Jojo and John Wood, Syndicate, everybody at Syndicate that has been helping me to get ready for for the last three weeks or uh, two weeks. I got one more week to go. Mm. UFC PI for opening up their doors for me. You know, all, all everybody that's, you know, my... My physiotherapist has been, and everybody that helped me through my injuries, you know, helped me to get back in, you know, so close to, to this. And and uh, I'm very grateful. A shout out to everybody. I love you. Thank you. 
um, I just wanted to tell you about this, this what's coming up. Mm -hmm. It's, it's the, actually the, the, the perfect setup. I've been thinking about it a lot. I've been way, like you talked about for 20 months now. And it's not been easy. And I, at the time, thought a lot about, you know, you know, everything. And I know that I am a fighter and I can feel it stronger than ever and how hungry I am to get back in there. Mm -hmm. And for this to be the case that we have this tournament and I get the opportunity to, to fight more than one fight, I have three fights in front of me and then the title belt was put on the line too. Mm -hmm. Everything is just the way it's supposed to be. All this time away, it was just to get me ready for this because I've been working hard and I've been keeping my my mentality at the right place, even though it was hurt. And it, it, I lost my motivation and I found it back again. And like I talked to you about, if you, mm -hmm. if you go through those things and you get back up, you're stronger than ever. Mm -hmm. And I feel that... Uh, I am stronger than ever and more durable and more ready than ever. And I can't wait to go and, and do my thing again, do what I love. I love what I do, so I can't wait to do it. Again. That's awesome. Well, I wish, I wish you the best. I mean, this is very exciting. I, I can't wait to see it. And it's hard to believe that it's only just a week or so away. And um, like I said, good luck and can't wait to see you fight and um yeah like i think you're gonna you know you're gonna crush it i saw some of your last fights i was like damn she's got a mean strike <laughs> and great takedowns thank you i appreciate it it's, it's me against myself like i said i don't care who is in front of me i i'm just excited to be be getting back in there and, and i'm full of energy and i have very positive feelings about this night and grateful for the opportunity and a big shout out to Invicta and Shannon for giving me this uh, this opportunity. It's, uh, it's going to be the night of my life. It's going to be the toughest night of my life, but I'm ready for that. That's awesome. You're going to fight like a Viking. Yeah. <laughs> and and I, I, under, I understand she's from, she's from Hawaii, Hawaii. So your first bout will be like uh, the fire and the ice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And then we'll see what happens from there cuz it's like it's like, you know, they have question marks I guess on the, you know, who's going the next round and who's going to go up against the next round, which is really kind of fun and cool to to, you know, nobody Well, knows. actually, we have volcanoes. Oh, um, you have volcanoes too. Yeah. Wow. Two volcanoes. Oh man, this could be very explosive fight. Yeah. yeah. Something. <laughs> Yeah, well, I can't wait to see you fight. I, I wish you the best. And thank you so much for coming on the show. And um, we'll be posting this um, early early this week. So I'll be sending you um, the, the video and the, uh, the links and everything so you can send it out to your fans and, and okay. your teammates. So good luck, Suna. I can't wait to see you in, in about a week's time. Do it. Represented. Represent. That's <laughs> awesome. Thank you for a good talk. It was good to see you. It was good to meet you and good to see yeah. you. I can't wait to meet you live someday soon. Yeah, let's do it. All right. You you rock right. on, lady. <laughs> Thanks again. Right, I gotcha. All right. Okay. Bye, bye. Bye. Well, I'd like to thank Suna, Tsunami, David's daughter, for coming on to the show. And check her out on Friday, May 3rd, where she will be fighting Kaylin Karan in the Invicta FC Phoenix Rising Series One Night Eight Women Tournament. So that'll be her first fight. She'll probably have uh, another couple of fights, and it's all to crown a new 115 pound champion or strawweight champion for Invicta FC. So it's going to be an exciting fight of nights. It'll be, it's going to be a nail biter. So tune into that on um, UFC Fight Pass on May 3rd. The other thing is, is, um, oh, you never want to miss, if you never want to miss an episode of Evolve WMMA with moi, Shelly Devine, 
Um, especially if you liked what you heard today and are eager to hear more, remember to subscribe or download on iTunes, or you can find us on Podomatic, Shout Engine, and Spotify at Evolve Women's MMA. And remember to leave a review. And if you do leave a review, mention Shuna and what you liked about her so we can compile uh, these reviews and send them to her so she's a, she, she's able to know you know how she inspired or motivated you and you can do that by going either to my blog evolvewmma.com and you know list something in the comments or you can do it in the comments on iTunes which would be really helpful for helping people also to find the show and if you prefer to watch instead of listen you can find a new episode on youtube at women's mma or you simply can follow us at facebook.com backslash i love wmma this is shelly divine until next time thanks for listening